Hi, this is Herb Shapiro with the Dr. Vax channel. And today we're going to break a whole bunch of shelf brackets of different materials, different variations of PLA to see which is strongest. I've created a special test machine just for this video. So if you're interested in learning if there's a difference for your application between PLA at $20 and PLA at $50, stay tuned and let's learn something together. Here at the Dr. Vax Labs, I try to provide practical information for the community. So today, when we're testing the strength of various PLA materials, it's a very practical exercise. After you watch this video, and I urge you to watch the whole thing, there's always little bits of information spread throughout the video that you'll find useful. Then I'd like to ask you to subscribe to the channel. If you like the material, give me a thumbs up, recommend it to other people, and make sure you click on the bell so you'll be notified about other videos in this series and about making things in general, creating things from nothing using desktop manufacturing technologies. All of these prints, except for a calibration print, which was made with Hatchbox PLA, were made with a variation of Matter Hacker PLA. They have a $20 PLA, I'm rounding these prices. They have a $40 PLA and they have a $50 PLA. They're basically their Build Series, their Pro Series, and their Tough Series. They were all printed at 210 degrees. So I didn't attempt to optimize for the material because 210 degrees with, was within the range they provide for all of these materials. They were all sliced in Prusa with 30% infill and all the rest of the parameters were standard for a 0.20 millimeter layer height print on Prusa to an Ender 3 version two. So I used a built-in profile in Prusa for these prints. So let's Take a look now at the device I built for testing these individual materials. Okay, let's look at the setup here. Um, I've traded in my desk chair for a bar stool. Unfortunately, there's really not enough room here in my basement lab for me to stand up uh, while shooting this video. So, uh, I'm going to be in the middle of this frame. Uh, this frame is made of two by fours of wood. This is a good example of the concept that the axiom that just because you have a hammer, everything is not a nail. Just because I have a 3D printer doesn't mean I should 3D print everything. This would have taken days to 3D print. It took an hour to put together, maybe a couple hours to put together out of wood. The concept here is really very simple. I wanted a mechanism where I, I could put a uh, measurable force on these shelf brackets. Now, when you think about a shelf bracket, the weight is really not pulling down. It's really not pushing down here on the end. It's pushing down uniformly across the bracket. Um, ideally, I would have a hole probably around here, or I'd have two uh, cables attached here, pulling down in the middle. That was a, a little bit too complex for this exercise. The purpose of this exercise is not to measure the absolute strength of these individual brackets. To do that correctly, and I'd have to print a lot of them, I'd have to print them with solid fills, I'd have to do many tests, I'd have to have a rig where I could put the force here, ideally I'd push on this instead of pulling. But what I want to see is what is the relative strength of these different materials. So the setup here is basically, I have a crank that I can use to put tension, I don't know if you can see the crank here, put tension on this mechanism here. 
This mechanism is a scale, and I'll turn it on with no weight on it, so it's reg registering zero, that's attached in the exact same place to each of the shelf brackets. There are washers on the top of the shelf bracket to uh, ensure that the nut doesn't pull through the plastic for some reason. And it's relatively easy to unscrew this one nut up here and replace a shelf bracket. To measure this, I'll actually be looking at this, so you won't be able to necessarily see it in the video, but I'll call out the numbers. So let me do sort of a calibration test. Calibration test is of this bracket printed in Hatchbox white PLA, a different family of materials than anything else we're going to test today. So the scale is zeroed. I'm going to begin to put some pressure on here. You can see now there are 11, approximately 11 pounds of pressure on this here. The shelf bracket is beginning to bend. If I leave it at that position for very long, the scale will lock in on that measurement. So I'm going to release this now, reset the scale so that we can do a full test. And let's see how much it gets to. We're at 17, 18, 19, 20, 30, 37, 45. And it was at about 47 pounds at which point this bracket broke. Now, interestingly enough, look where it broke. It broke at the top. It broke relative to where the hole was because it was obviously a bit weaker there. And it broke here along this back edge. So let's think about that. These are printed like that. So the layer lines are going this way. So there's a lot of strength in this direction and in this direction, but these two angles, these two components join there. So where there's a change of direction, where there's a joint, you have less adhesion, and that's actually where it broke. So it didn't actually break in the plastic itself, it broke at this joint right over here, um, as I said, at about 47 pounds. So let me reset this now with the first of the Matter Hackers PLA builds, and we'll see how it does. You'll notice I'm wearing safety glasses now. It became obvious to me that when these break, some plastic might go flying about. Good to have additional safety besides my optical lenses. This is Matter Hacker Standard PLA. They often call it Build PLA. And uh, I'm reset to zero. Let's start cranking away uh, 10 pounds, 11, 12, 15, 20, 25, 29, 30, 32, 35. About 35, 36. This one broke right here. So this was about 36 pounds. This is the standard PLA. 36 pounds. Um, and the Hatchbox PLA was, let's say it was about 45 to 47 pounds. Uh, once again, I wouldn't use those as absolute measures. It seems Hatchbox was a little bit stronger than the Matter Hacker PLA, but each print will be slightly different. We'd say 35 to 45 is the range for standard PLA. Let's reset and we'll do the next test. We're set up now with Pro PLA. Now, remember Pro PLA is about twice as much money as the standard build or uh, basic PLA from Matter Hacker. So let's see what happens here. We're going to reset the scale. It's zeroed. And let's go ahead and do a test here. I'm going to move these out of the way so I don't knock those. Oops. Need to reset that one more time. Here we go. Okay. 10, 11, 12, 15, 20, 29, 30, 35. This broke in the exact same place. This is clearly a weak spot as the build or basic PLA. 
in the same 35 to 40 range. So it looks like 35 to 45, depending on the PLA and the build, um, is about the range for PLA. So if you're going to buy Pro PLA just for strength, at least in this test, it wasn't any stronger. And it's twice as much money. So let's look at tough PLA. So we're at 5, 10, 11, 12, 15, 19, 20, 25, 31. Wow, interesting. So this snapped quicker. So it appears that tough PLA bends less and snaps a little quicker. Clearly, it's going to make a big difference the nature of your application. Let's see what happens with tough PLA when it's annealed. Okay, now I'm back with tough PLA that's been annealed. It was heated at 200 degrees Fahrenheit for about 30 minutes in just a standard home oven. One of the side effects of annealing a material is it shrinks. That was obvious when I was attaching this bracket. The holes were a little bit closer together and a little bit smaller, so it was a little tricky attaching this. If your part needs absolute precision, you're going to need to anneal things in advance and then adjust dimensions for the shrinkage you'll get at a given temperature and given amount of time that you're annealing the material. Okay, this is going to be very interesting. In the Matter Hacker spec sheet, which we looked at before, and we'll look at again now, it says that annealed tough PLA becomes more impact resistant. That's different, very different, than its shearing strength, its ability to be pulled apart or broken. We're testing really shearing strength here, not impact strength. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. I'm resetting to zero. And let me begin cranking this up. And we're at 10, 11, 12, 13, 19, 20, 25, 27, 29, 30, 30, about 35. Broke in the exact same place. Very interesting. All of the Matter Hacker materials, from a shearing perspective, when bending them, seem to be about the same. So what did we learn? Did we learn anything? Well, let me take down the testing equipment and reposition the camera and we'll wrap up. Wow, very interesting. I think what's interesting is not only the numbers, but watching how the brackets broke, where the stresses were. So if you just skip to the end here, I'm gonna give you a wrap up, but I'd encourage you to go back and listen to the whole video and watch what we saw. At the end of the day, when putting stresses on a bracket on the end here, pulling down from the bracket, all of the Matter Hacker brackets broke in the same place. So this is obviously a place where you'd have to re-optimize the design. Once again, it's interesting to note that when you're using a shelf bracket, the force is across the whole bracket. It's not on the very end. So it's not necessarily a great test of the shelf bracket in a practical everyday use. We did find that universally, they snapped at about 35 pounds of force. And the only bracket that was a little bit stronger was a bracket from a completely different manufacturer from Hatchbox, which is also a low cost manufacturer. So whether you spend $20 for your material or $50 for your material, with this design, it's not going to matter. When you read the Matter Hacker literature, it tells you that it's really impact resistance and temperature that matter. 
So let's look again at Tough PLA, a material I'm very impressed with because the prints look absolutely beautiful. They look like they'd be stronger. So if I was printing this solid, no infill, if I optimized it so the force was at the end of the triangle and not out this leg away from the triangle, my guess is just from watching it, this will be stronger and that its glass transition temperature is a bit higher, meaning it will hold its form under higher temperatures. Because when I annealed this, it shrunk, but it didn't deform. So it held its temperature fine at 200 degrees Fahrenheit. So if I was printing something to go into a, a car, let's say, where it can get to 110, 120, 130 degrees Fahrenheit, I'd be just fine using Tough PLA from MatterHacker. So folks, this was very, very interesting. We learned that it's really a combination of design, material, print characteristics, fill, number of perimeters, number of walls. All these things are going to impact strength. But for a given design, in some cases, it's not going to be stronger just because you spend more money. Thanks a lot for watching. If you liked the video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, leave me comments here, and go over to forum.drvax.com. It's a place where a bunch of the viewers of these videos are forming a community. It's a community of kind, caring, helpful people that discuss the same topics we discuss on this channel. Thanks again for watching, and let's continue to learn things together.